host, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your spoiler-free guide to streaming horror entertainment. I'm your host, James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is pick a horror movie from one of the various streaming services and give it a spoiler-free review. Scream Stream is available wherever podcasts are served, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. Just head over to ScreamPod.com, and all the links are there. If you'd like to support me and my creations, head over to Patreon.com slash James Gass. You can also pick up some horror-themed t-shirts from the ScreamStream Tee Public store at tpublic.com slash stores slash scream dash stream. You'll be supporting not only the podcast, but indie artists as well, creating awesome killer t-shirt designs. So this week, uh, I am doing... So we are back after a couple of weeks. Uh, I recorded, you know, I did a, I did the live scream stream on Twitch, and I recorded. Uh, um, what did I review? Oh, ghost stories. And I have to say, I wasn't really happy with the way it turned out. I think because I was streaming live, I was a little, a little nervous about doing it. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was entertaining, and then I. I I put a lot of pressure on my unneeded pressure on myself to to do it perfectly. And I just kind of, I think it, it just didn't sound good and it didn't come out the way I hoped it would. So I, I just didn't release it. I, I have it recorded and maybe I'll, maybe I'll post that somewhere. I don't know. Uh, so I, I didn't release it. Uh, and I apologize if you really want to hear it, I'll export the audio and maybe post it uh, to the Facebook page. And you can listen to it there exclusively there because I'm not going to put that in the con in the uh, podcast feed. Uh, so for this week's episode, I'm reviewing Rob Zombie's 31. Now, this is a 2016 horror film from, of course, Rob Zombie currently has a 5.1 on IMDb. This was written and directed by Rob Zombie. Stars Malcolm McDowell, Richard Brake, Jeff Daniel Phillips and uh, Meg Foster. Meg Foster, you know, I always recognize her from John Carpenter's They Live. Her eyes, man, are just like, her eyes are wild. Uh, you'll always recognize her just, just from those eyes. And she's actually been in a lot of stuff, and other than just that. Uh, she's in Overlord, Masters of the Universe, Keepers Creepers 3, she was in Twin Peaks, or the, the new Twin Peaks, she was in that, Blind Fury, Leviathan. Uh, they lived, as I mentioned, she was also in the Cosby show. Weird. Okay. Uh, she was in the wind. Uh, she was in uh, the eighties reboot of the twilight zone. So a whole bunch of stuff. All right. Enough about that. Uh, for a brief plot synopsis, five carnival, carnival, five, carnival, five carnival workers are kidnapped and held hostage in an abandoned hell like compound where they are forced to participate in a violent game the goal of which is to survive 12 hours against a gang of sadistic clowns. Well, I guess I also should mention that uh, this also has Richard Brake, who has a major part in this film. He is, he is the, uh, the night King on game of Thrones, which I did not know. He's also been in quite a few things as well. All right. So let's, let's start off with, with acting. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, Rob Zombie usually uses a lot of the same actors, especially Sherry Moon Zombie, his wife. She plays the character of Charlie. Uh, you know, she's an all right actor. Not bad. Uh, I think she, she, I think in House of a Thousand Corpses, I didn't like her character as much there. I, maybe it was her acting. Acting seemed to, I don't know, just was not that great. In this film, I think is a lot better. She, there's a huge improvement between uh, when she started off then to now. I think she's a lot better actress now, actor. Uh, and I did enjoy her in this film. Uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips, he's been in quite a few things. Good actor. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, Meg Foster, uh, Kevin Jackson, Malcolm McDowell, uh, Jane Carr, Judy Geeson, Richard Brake. All these people have done a really good job in this film. They're all they are all really good actors and I like the way they portray their characters. Just really good acting in the film. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought, you know, there would be, I thought there'd be, you know, some, some bad acting here and there. I mean, it's kind of expected, especially if you know, Rob Zombie's films, 
not all the acting is great, uh, but here uh, I was I was really happy. Uh, as far as the look and cinematography and direction, the direction is great. Cinematography is amazing. the The way the opening sequence is shot is like super tense, close in on Doomhead's face while he's telling the story, and then you're like, "Who is he talking to?" And I think the shot, I think that shot went on a little too long. But they finally cut to this this priest person. I think they could have shortened that shot a little bit, but stylistically, it looked really good. Uh, the film, the film overall looked really good. I like the use of colors. Uh, the film is dark, but it's not like it's not like one of those super dark films where you just can't see what's going on. There's a lot of of blues and reds uh, and greens used. A lot of primary colors. I like the color scheme. Each each section sort of has its own color scheme so that you know we're moving on to to something else now. And it's almost as if he paired the color of the area with the clown that was doing the 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 stalking or whatever um the hunting. That's not a spoiler, don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to do any spoilers. Um uh, I do think it's kind of a new twist on the five friends thing, because typically in a film like this, you would have five young friends uh, in this. They're all older. They're all probably late 40s, uh, maybe mid 50s. I think late 40s to like early 50s. So it's not just the typical five friend teenage group. Um, So I think that adds. Ironically, or surprisingly enough, that adds a little, a little more. Uh, I don't like not professionalism, but a little more character to the film. So it's not just a bunch of kids that I can't relate to. Uh, it's a little more relatable. There you go, a little more relatable. Uh, so the story was a little shallow in that there's not like a whole lot of plot twists or anything like that. It is like, it's a film that it is what it is and it delivers the best way possible. The story between the friends is kind of interesting uh, how it kind of doesn't really go back and go into their history but you can tell they've been doing this carnival thing for a long time. I guess I should mention that this is set in the seventies. I think 76 is when this film is set. So it is a period piece, uh, but you, I mean, you wouldn't really be able to tell a whole lot. So the story is a little kind of cut and dry, but it's a good story though. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's not like, I don't want to say it's, it's nothing we haven't seen before, but it is a nice twist on, things we have seen and stylistically going back to kind of the style. I like the way Rob zombie, a lot of his films or most of his films have this grindhouse style, but not in a goofy way that you see done with, uh, Quentin Tarantino or, um, or planet terror, uh, from Robert Rodriguez or even machete. Those are, I feel like those are more spoofs on the grindhouse style of film from the, from the seventies to me that I don't really like that very much. I now don't get me wrong. Machete. I, I love machete and I love its style, but it is, it is spoofy. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not, it knows what it is. It's, it it's very tongue in cheek. Whereas Rob Zombie has this style where it feels like a true grindhouse film and not trying to poke at the genre or um do like this extreme imitation of it, you know what I mean? It it feels like a genuine grindhouse film. I don't know how he does it, but he does it effectively just the the looks and the colors and the and the grit and uh it, it's very grindhousey like in a classic sense i love it i love his style of films and i think wife and i were talking 
you really have to be a Rob Zombie fan or just a, a hardcore horror fan to appreciate the work that he does. I don't think mainstream horror audiences are going to like any of his films because I think mostly mainstream horror audiences, when they want to watch horror, they want to watch something like Annabelle or Friday the 13th or um, The Conjuring, films like that, very mainstream stuff. Rob Zombie's films are more of art house styles, grindhouse styles, a lot of depth, a lot of a lot of artistic choices in color and uh, saturations and um, just the way things are framed, the way shots are framed, very art house. I love his style. I've always loved his style from from the time I saw House of a Thousand Corpses. I mean, I'm like, I love his style of filmmaking. It's just very unique, I guess. Because uh, I think when you watch a Rob Zombie film, you know you're watching a Rob Zombie film. I'm so excited from, for Three from Hell. Now, wife loved, uh, she loved Devil's Rejects, but did not realize that it was actually a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses. Because when she said, she's like, oh, Three from Hell is a sequel. I was like, yeah, it's a sequel to Devil's Rejects, was, was a sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses. She said, oh, I didn't know that. I said, well, you got to watch this movie now. So I'm going to try to get her to watch that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I love his style. So I think overall, the film is really good. And if you are a lover of of horror, like if you're just a hardcore horror fan, you're going to love this film too. I, I think the pacing was nice. It was a little slow at first, but once we got going, it didn't stop. I think the gore was nice. The, the visuals were good. I don't think he used any CGI. I don't think he really uses CGI. I think all of his effects are practical effects and they look really good. The only thing I was disappointed with was the ending. I wasn't really happy about it. I think it could have been a little different or gave us a little bit more closure, but he did leave it open ended. Uh, so maybe there might be a sequel to this. I think there could be a really good sequel. I think this could be sort of at least a trilogy. Yeah, I, I, I like this from a lot. I think 5.1 is out of 10 is low. I think for my for my rating system, I'd give this a four, like a solid four. And I definitely think you should check it out. It is available. I think it's on Shutter. Let me let me double check because we we actually bought this from Vudu. Let me double check to see if it is on Shutter because I know Shutter also had. Uh, yeah, it is on Shutter because they also have like a bunch of bonus features like uh, commentary from Rob Zombie, the making of. Uh, two part making of, so yeah, I go check it out on Shutter. They got some extra features there. If you don't, I say this all the time. If you don't have Shutter, it is so worth the four dollars and ninety nine cents a month. I promise you, because they have a lot of really good stuff on there, uh, which I will talk about uh, coming up in the uh, what's new to stream. And speaking of what's new to stream, let's see what's on Netflix because Netflix has added. Not a whole lot of stuff. They they have slacked the past couple of weeks, and it's 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 a shame. All right, so on Netflix we have Don't Knock Twice, which is uh, I I tried watching this movie. I was going to review it this week, but I tried watching it. I could I couldn't get past the first ten minutes. It just was not good. The story just opened up to this. You have no idea what's going on, and they don't. Kind of, they don't try to explain anything in the very beginning. They don't set up the story very well. Uh, so I, I gave up. I was going to review it because there's a video game called Don't Knock Twice, which I, it's in my Steam uh, wish list. I was like, oh, cool. It's got a video game. It must be decent, right? No, it is not a decent film. <laughs> I, I tried watching it and I gave up. So, but, but I mean, if you, if you want to give it a shot, it is there. And then we also have the. The Kirlian, the Kirlian frequency, K I R L I A N. This is an animated series. I think it's, it's a series. I think, uh, but it's a sci-fi horror Spanish. I believe this is a Spanish cartoon. It looks really interesting. I just saw the the preview for it today. It looks pretty cool. So I might give that a shot. Uh, Deadly Detention. Don't know what that is. 
And then we have The Super, which is kind of more of a thriller, like a horror thriller. It looks it looks all right. And and that that that's it for Netflix. That's all there is. It's been a really slow couple of weeks for for horror releases. All right, moving on to Shudder. We have Eli Roth, The History of Horror. This is a uh, I think this is a series as well. Yeah, this is a series. Each episode is about 42 minutes long uh, and it, you know, covers the history of horror. And I will be watching this because I love Eli Roth. He's one of my favorite horror directors right now. Uh, Him and Mike Flanagan are like on the top. And then we have The Reflecting Skin from the 80s, I believe. Over Your Dead Body, Don't Torture a Duckling. This is an Italian giallo film. Uh, I believe this was, wasn't this... um, Oh, who was this? Let's see. Lucio Fulci. That's right. Um, and then we also have Madhouse, which I, I have not seen. It looks interesting. Beast, which is a Shutter exclusive. The Crucifixion. Brain Damage. Images. Horror Noir, which is a really good uh, documentary about, about, about uh, black history in horror. Uh, really fascinating. And that is uh, Horror Noir. Then we have Tales from the Hood. I love that movie. I tried watching the sequel with uh, Keith David. I might go back and, and finish that. I don't know. I'll try to. We'll see. Uh, then we have people, The People Under the Stairs. If you haven't seen that, classic film. I, I, I love love that movie. Uh, and then I think that's it. Because, yeah, the, on the last episode, we covered The Others. Um, I, think we, I think I mentioned The other, Others. Yeah. So that's it for Shudder. On Amazon, we have some interesting releases. Uh, Adam Age Vampire, which is kind of like one of these schlock horror classics from 1960. We have In the Woods from 1999. I think I remember that movie. I might let me add that to my watch list. The Brain That Wouldn't Die, the rare uncensored version, definitely going in my watch list. Another classic film. Uh, the Dead Hate the Living. This is from Full Moon, back when Full Moon actually made good Good spoopy movies, you know what I mean? So, like, movies that weren't scary, but they were kind of a little spooky and kind of funny at the same time. Uh, I I like this movie a lot. It's just a really good film, and I do recommend that you check it out. Uh, and then we have The Killer Eye, another kind of schlock classic. Uh, it's from 1999, but I, I mean, I still kind of put it in schlock. There's like some other like really new things like uh, Dora from uh, 2017. I don't I don't know what that is. Never heard of it. Uh, Sh- oh, Shadow Zone from 1990. That's a really good one. And I think that about covers it for for uh, Amazon Prime. And I think yeah, that's all we got. Let me double check Hulu just to see if I don't think anything else has been put on Hulu because. Their horror selection, you can never tell what's there and what's new because they just don't have a section for, like, new releases. You know what I mean? And if it is new releases, it's stuff that's actually been there for, like, months. I don't know what what they consider new releases, but what I consider new releases is stuff that's been added within the last three weeks at least. Okay, here's new movies on Hulu. Way at the freaking bottom. Why is this not at the top of the screen? Okay, I digress. Uh, nothing. There's nothing here. No new horror on Hulu. Space Jam. That's that was horrific. Um. All right. So, uh, yeah. There's there's nothing else to cover. That that's all the streaming services. Well, not all of them. I don't. Do y'all want me to cover services like Crackle and things like that? If if so, please. Drop me an email, go to screenpod.com slash contact, send me an email, or post it on the uh, the Facebook page. Let me know if you if you want to hear from any of those other services. And before I go into the, uh, the outro here, I do want to re- remind you that I do stream horror games on Twitch. It is twitch.com slash Jimbo Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. I stream strictly horror games, so like on Wednesday nights, I'm doing Dead by Daylight. Thursday and Friday is is random horror game night. Right now I'm working on Cry of Fear, trying to get Resident Evil 7 to work. I put it on the PC, and it kept crashing on me last night. I got to uh, the second 
the, the third boss fight and it kept crashing and I gave up on it. So I'm going to see if I can try to get that to work. If I can't, then I'm, I'll move on to something else. There's a couple really good games in my Steam wish list that I can't purchase right now. But yeah, if you, if you want to uh, check me out on Twitch, I'm trying to get to 50 followers there to make affiliate. Once you get affiliate, you can uh, get subscriptions and things like that. Um, so if you're interested in video games, horror video games, head over there, follow me on Twitch. Uh, I am streaming Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays from uh, 9.45 p.m. Eastern time to about 11.30. Uh, and then I don't just talk horror games while I'm there. I mean, I'll whatever you all want to talk about, the chat is there. I interact with chat. I love it. Uh, that I mean, that's why I love Twitch so much. I'm kind of moving away from, from YouTube because YouTube is just, they're kind of ruining things at the moment, and I just don't want to be a part of that. So, all right, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Scream Stream. If you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at screampod.com, where you can find links to all of my social profiles. While you're there, you can listen to episodes or previous episodes of Scream Stream and subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Anywhere else podcasts are served. I actually have buttons there for for, uh, for Spotify, I, uh, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, I think. Uh, if you have a movie you'd like me to review, head over to screenpod.com slash contact, fill out the email form, let me know, or post it on the Facebook page, because I am up for taking requests, because picking a film is hard, because there are thousands of movies to choose from. So if you have one you think I'd like, or not like and just want to hear my review let me know please do uh if you want to join the facebook page it's it's uh, facebook.com slash screen pod and you can join the page there and then finally music used for scream stream was created by kevin mcleod at incompetech.com until next week i'm james gas saying if it was real the cameraman would be dead too good night 